All right, guys, welcome back to the Frugal Homestead. So today I thought I'd bring you up on the roof and we'll discuss the solar system, what it's been doing, how it's been faring, what has failed, and what's gonna change when we move it down to the tiny house. So let's go. All right, so as you guys can see, the panels all look like they're in real good condition, not showing a lot of wear and tear. There is a little bit of discoloration here at the bottom, but that's just from where the water hits the wood and sits there in pools. I probably could optimize them by cleaning that, but at the moment, I'm really happy with how they're doing. Now, a lot of people said that these wooden mounts I have here would be twisted up in the first year. They are actually working fine. Zero issues, I plan on tearing it down and using it to help install it down on the tiny house. All right, time for the problem children panels. These two panels are inoperative at the time. There's nothing wrong with the actual panels. We'll go discuss what's actually wrong with these guys in just a moment. Now, as we make our way in the wood burner building, you can see it's been unhooked. All right, so the reason behind it being unhooked is very simple. It blew up. Now, those of you who watched my videos know that I just replaced that one like six months ago, maybe a little more. But the reason is not the grid ties fault. And I thought I could get away with it, but then I got busy with other projects and didn't finish what I was going to do. So inside the wood burner building, as you can see, there's ashes and wood chips and dust and smoke from when the wood burners open because even when you open it and there's nothing going in it, it still has smoke that'll poof out. That combined with this being like an eight by 10 building holds the heat in here. Now this thing pumps the hot air into the house, but this building at the level that grid tie is at right there, will get up to about 110 degrees when I've got this thing fully cranked up. So heat is the number one thing that was destroying it. The other thing is the fans end up failing either because of heat or because they get so much dust built up inside them, ashes, smoke, residue. Um, it's just a bad situation to put it here. Now I probably could have made it last longer by using a USB powered fan which is what I plan on doing inside, making a bar of them to blow up through all of our grid ties. But stay with us till the end of the video because I'm gonna tell you what I'm gonna change when we move this stuff down the tiny house to hopefully solve this problem. You're not gonna to wanna to miss it. All right guys, so hopefully you can hear me over top of these grid ties, they're kinda of loud. But as you can see, all these are still running just fine. Now, there's nothing wrong with this style grid tie. You can make it work, but you have to keep it in an area where it's gonna be somewhat temperature regulated. The noise kind of sucks. There's a lot of downfalls to it. The fans do fail over time, but if you were to put a bar under here with three little USB fans blowing up through it, they would be fine. Now these ones haven't had a problem. I did actually end up replacing the middle one here, but that was due to a lightning strike that hit a power line and it backfed through the whole system. It blew up TVs, it blew up all kinds of stuff. So. That was not its fault. But what I do want to say to you guys is that we have to make changes to evolve with technology as it comes out and gets more cost effective. Now these guys are running fine. Everything's running good. We're still putting power back in the grid to offset our usage. So they will continue to be used in some way, shape or form. But let's talk about what we're going to do at the tiny house. All right guys, so we haven't decided yet exactly where we're gonna put the panels on the tiny house here. But one thing I need you to know is I have 12, I think, of those GCI panels. Now, I don't need that many in our tiny house. We're not gonna have that much in the way of offsetting to need. We're gonna do a small on-demand water system. I mean, a basic real small 110 pump. We're not gonna have all the big appliances. We're not gonna run a stove. We're gonna run our Instapot and our air fryer. So. You just don't need lots of solar on a tiny house. Now, there will be air conditioners and there will be heaters, so that's a thing to take into account. But we will probably put six panels up on here. And what I'm planning on doing is, if I can get them for a good enough price, is go ahead and go with the in-phase inverters. I just think for the cost they are now, why not? I mean, 
The cheap Chinese grid ties have served me well, but I think that if I take the time to engineer those to keep them as cool as possible and out of the elements as much as possible, the end phase inverters will just serve me a lot better than those do. Now with that said, as it is always said, you have your own new unique sets of problems by switching to end phase, but I don't want you guys to think I'm giving up on the Chinese inverters. I'm just looking for another opportunity where I can put some panels up and where I can put those inverters up to serve a purpose for someone. So that's something we're looking at. That's what's going on with our solar system. Our little DUI grid tied solar system has served us well, made us tons of money because the honest thing is our bill is so low. You've got to really crank it up to really get our power bill to go much over about 50 or hundred dollars for about nine months out of the year. That makes for a huge savings over the four to $500 a month that we started having at our property up there. Now there has been other things we've done to learn to save electricity. We also have put in a wood burner, but it does basically run a fan or a dual fan setup, 24 hours a day blowing it through our house. So take all that into comparison with the whole overall assessment of our system. Now in 2022, this system's coming down and going there. So I just wanted to give you guys an update of where we're at with everything. I want to make sure that if you're seeing us use these Chinese inverters, you know they're not perfect. You know that it's on you to make this system work better. They come to you in this format. That's expected to be put in perfect setup. So make it cooler, make it to the point where you can use it, where it will bring in power and it will last. Because the longer you make those last, the less of an investment you actually made. Let them pay themselves off and then go on to the next one. Now, with that said, if you haven't already, and I don't know why you wouldn't have, go down, hit the subscribe button, hit the notification bell so you see all of our upcoming videos. Go down in the comments, let me know if you use these lower cost inverters to grid tie, or if you're off grid, let me know about your system, direct me to your videos, I'd love to check it out. And if you can, go down and give this video a like because what that does is it throws it up in the algorithm and says hey people should see this video and it would help us out greatly don't forget lots more videos because i will film the whole thing as we install it however we decide to stall it this summer on either a tiny house or on a pedestal or a ground mount we'll see what happens but i will see you guys in the next one